welcome back. Well, I bought one of these uh, 12 volt DC motors with its, uh, it's got its own encoder uh, built into it and had a gearbox. I thought I'd give it a go closing a loop around it. Uh, I'm going to use um, an H bridge off the shelf again. This one, by the way, I bought from DF Robot, but you can buy them other places. It's called a FIT0186. FIT0186. So here's my H bridge, which is a reasonably hefty one, uh, so I can experiment with it. And I've got a ma my Rio, there it is, with the H bridge connections. Uh, and I've uh, connected the motor here. It's got a little load on it. Um, and a bit of tape so you can see it moving, otherwise it's difficult to see which direction it's going in. Um, so, so here's the um, data sheet of the um, motor and you can see it's 12 volt motor, 250 RPM with an encoder. Not exactly that cheap to be honest but um, it looks quite a beefy little motor. Because of the gearbox it's going to give us uh, quite a lot of torque. Uh, but of course the gearbox is probably the first thing that uh, that wears out if you use it a lot. Uh, so it's uh, with the gears 43 to 7 uh, reduction and that obviously increases the torque when it gives you uh, 2797, 2797 pulses per revolution of the gearbox's output shaft which is uh, pretty good. Such a small motor and there's the stall current is 7 amps which is quite a lot. 12 volts and the other data on it. Uh, there's the it's been connected to an Arduino there in the example, um, but it's got a. This is the these are the connections to the uh, encoder. So it's the usual 12 volt, uh, 5 volts, rather 5 volts um, supply to the encoder, uh, and there's a A and a B a quadrature output which we use, and. Uh, it's 12 volts motor. The, the the supply for the motor will go to the uh, PWM um, output of the H bridge, of course, um, the high current output of the H bridge, and that is that is on the uh, right hand side here of this thing. So it's got two channels, channel A and channel B. I'm I'm just using channel A, and the power goes in in the middle there. And these are the logic um, inputs. So there's a IN1 and an IN2. Uh, they need to go 1, 0, or 0, 1 for forward and reverse. There's a ground, and probably want to connect that. You don't need the V plus because that's a, an output rather than an input. And the EN is um, uh, where you uh, put your PWM. So you put your PWM, you don't need the CT connection. The EN comes from the uh, micro, in this case, the my Rio. And without further ado, I suppose I should really um, get it uh, running. And uh, I've got my program over here, which is similar to all the other ones. I'm going to start it up. Uh, it's going to twist around a little bit, unfortunately, when I do this. So I'm going to have to hold it. There it goes. So I'm putting a square wave into it at a frequency of 1 hertz. I've closed the loop. I've got a controller which I'll talk about in a minute. And we can have a look at the um, response. Oops. There it is. It's quite a, well, it's a reasonably well damped response. It's about 10% uh, a little bit more overshoot. So it's got a phase margin probably in, in the region of um, 60 degrees or 55 degrees thereabouts. I've uh, set it up for a phase advance at 30 hertz and a PI compensator. The cutoff is at 2 hertz and an overall gain of 750. That doesn't mean much until you see the equations, of course. The other thing I can do is I can turn off this automatic square wave thing. Oops. And then I can put another set point in and get it to oops, 
and get it to follow them, just like I did with the big motor. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have three hands, so it's a bit very difficult to show you the really nice response. See if I can... Oh, there we go. That's following the set point, which is another encoder. It's a Porsche encoder with 4096 pulses coming out of it. It's a nice, well damp response as I turn the input. It's following, and of course I can go around. Oops. You see that little bit of oscillation there? So let's go back and have a look. And there it is. <laughs> following the, it's just recorded all the inputs and all the strange inputs I've put. I can also put in a pure velocity input. Oops, there she goes. So it's turning at a constant velocity. That's putting a ramp into it. It's about a Type 2 system, so it's going to um, follow the, the ramp. I can change the speed of the ramp. There she goes. Turn that off. So there we have it. Uh, just closing a loop around a very small motor, the Fit 0186, um, and telling you a little bit about the uh, theory, uh, just to show you how it matches in with the uh, practice. Thank you. Welcome back. Uh, what I've got here is a diagram of a DC motor, the block diagram. Uh, it's got a gain there. That can be the H bridge or it could be a linear amplifier. It's got a resistance and an inductance and its armature controlled. I don't show the field because that's a permanent magnet. It's driving into some moment of inertia, J, turning around at some speed, omega. So there's been a few questions people asking me um, about the board plots in more detail. How do we go about designing these things? And it's worth um, going into a little bit of detail. So if you um, analyse that, what we'll find is that we get uh, nominally um, a second order system, at least from the point of view of speed, to the input voltage. Uh, it's not too difficult to do that. Uh, I don't have time or space to do it here, but uh, we end up with a system that looks like this with a board plot, got some kind of gain, I'll just call it K, and it rolls off here at the first break point, the motor time constant, that's to do with the inertia, uh, 1 up in Tm, this is in radians per second, uh, it would be 1 up in 2 pi Tm if it was in hertz. So it's flat and then it goes down at minus 20 dB per decade until it hits the inductive um, uh, time constant, in which case it goes to minus 40 dB per decade. I've just called that TL and TM. So its transfer function would look uh, something like this, second order K over 1 plus STM, 1 plus STL. I'm not going to draw the phase for this, uh, I'll draw it in a minute for the more complex problem, uh, because in fact we're not doing a speed control, we're doing a position control. Now what that means is that the um, output will be at the angular position and not the velocity. And the relationship, if I go over here, between angular velocity and angular position is an integrator, a 1 upon s. So in fact, the only difference between the transfer functions when you've got a position output is that you've got an extra integrator. I sometimes call that a mechanical integrator because it's not uh, an op amp or anything or any digital kind of um, transfer function. It comes from the the act of measurement really, so we call it the mechanical. Now, when we put that in, the board plot changes because we've now got a pure integrator. So the pure integrator starts, goes right down to DC where it's got infinite gain, but we don't, we don't show DC, but we show some low uh, frequency. Cuts down at minus 20 dB per decade until it hits the motor time constant, that's the inertia, inertia time constant. Uh, and then it goes to minus 40. That's not good because it's going through 0 dB at minus 40 dB per decade. That's going to be probably unstable or close to instability. Then it hits the um, 
uh, time constant of the inductor, inductive reactants, uh, and it goes down at minus 60 dB per decade. So it's going to be third order. And there it is, K over S, that's the integrator, 1 plus STM, 1 plus STL. Let's look at the phase, because we've got a pure integrator, so it's going to start at minus 90. And uh, when it hits the um, first breakpoint, that'll go down by 45, and then it'll try to go down to about minus 180, because it's got minus 40 dB per decade. So it goes, this is a rough board plot goes down to minus 180 and then down to minus 170 with the third pole because it's three poles altogether. So wh whatever it looks like, it will end up at minus 270 and it will start at minus 90. Although that might not be a perfectly accurate plot, it's kind of near enough to, to get an idea that when this uh, magnitude plot here crosses through unity gain, that point there, 0 dB, go down, and you can see there's the phase margin, the difference between the actual phase and minus 180 degrees. It's very, very small. So if you close a loop around the system, you're going to get overshoot or depending on the gain, as you increase it, it's going to start oscillating. Okay, so the question is, how do we get a decent bandwidth and get it to be stable? And that's the next bit.